Hello everybody and welcome back to the farm. Today in Maine it's rainy and kind of gray, but we're still feeling very excited because in 18 days a lot of these mama goats <laughs> will be having their babies. And today I think they're just appreciating a day of sort of chilling out and relaxing. A chicken's having a little visit today. Abby's getting a nice little back scratch on the hay feeder. And because no one's out and about in the pasture today, I wanted to just share something that happened yesterday for you to think about and maybe we can apply it to our own lives. So we have this huge old well that nobody uses that we needed a cover for. We had some really ugly wire on top of it and a makeshift cover, but we wanted something a little better than that. So Chris and I cut the top off a big spool and wheeled it over so that um, we could cover it a little bit more elegantly for the coming season. And when we did that, the goats were very, very nervous. They all froze, as you can see, in a big pack together. And they wouldn't move from that spot for about 10 minutes as we were making these changes to their pasture. It was something that was out of the ordinary for them and they didn't really know how to deal with it and their reaction was to become very, very still. Maybe this animal instinct for freezing when they sense danger is something that has a human application as well. Not exactly literally, but imagine all the ways our minds have become still or we've had opportunities for stillness in our mind since the world has kind of shut down and we've all been forced to be on our own. Maybe it's this very stillness and awareness of our surroundings, this hyper awareness of our surroundings and the moment that allows us to cope in times that are unusual or scary or different than what we're used to. Just like the goats experienced yesterday when we started rolling a gigantic wheel through their pasture. Goats are herbivores and they don't even have um, top teeth. If you open up their mouths, they have little teeth on the bottom for scraping things, but, and they have sharp molars, but they have no teeth in their top gums. So without those top teeth that carnivores have, this freezing that they do when something out of the ordinary happens is really their only way of protecting themselves. As a side note that has nothing to do with anything, they also have four stomachs, which enables them to digest all sorts of crazy things like rose bushes and Christmas trees. All kinds of shrubby stuff is what they like best. Thanks for stopping by the farm on this rainy day, everybody. I thought we'd include a little bit of a longer yoga piece today and then end with a goat parade, because who doesn't need a little goat parade? We'll see you all tomorrow. Don Pedro, I'm sure, will stop by. But I wanted to offer you just a little bit of a longer segment today. Um, I'm thinking maybe a little deep breath could help everyone. And if you've never done yoga before, let me just assure you, yoga is for everybody. It doesn't matter what you're wearing or what you look like or where you are. Here I am in my barn with my barn boots on a hay bale, right? So it can be done anywhere. It's really just breathing. So I'm going to introduce just a couple of minutes that you can try. If it feels good, it's something that you could easily repeat in your own house whenever you like. And you can be sitting on the floor or in a chair, whatever works for you. So let's start just by sitting up really tall. And one way to get that length is to push into your hands, maybe right next to your hips. Find that length of your head towards the top of the barn ceiling or your kitchen or wherever you are. You know, maybe it's not raining where you are and you can actually go outside. And then see if you can let 
go of your hands and keep all that beautiful height. Even if this is all you ever did or got out of yoga, sitting up a little straighter, taking a little pressure off our neck and our spine, right? That's a great thing. And then consciously drop your shoulders away from your ears. And let's place one hand on our heart and the other and hook our thumbs. It's that eagle mudra we talked about a few classes ago. And begin to just notice your breath. You've been breathing all day, but you probably haven't noticed yet. So be a little bit more conscious of what happens on your inhales and your exhales. Good. Inhaling and exhaling. Remember that eagles have amazing vision up to three miles and sometimes all we need to get a better clear view of the world and let go of some of that stress is breathing. It gives us that eagle vision. Good. A couple more breaths here. And then you can take your hands to your side and bring your head over to the right side. Like that not too much you don't want to crank your neck just nice and gentle but continue that breath and you're breathing into the openness in your neck trying to create some length and it can sometimes feel good to even stretch this arm out in the opposite direction a little bit and that increases the feeling of a nice opening through that whole side Hello, Danny T. Good. We'll take our head up through center. Maybe roll your shoulders back once and twice. And we'll take our head over to the other side. Again, maybe you drop the opposite hand down. It can also feel good to dial that chin in a slightly different direction, maybe towards your armpit. See how that feels. My science teacher once told me that breathing actually connects us to anyone who's ever lived. I thought that was pretty mind-blowing. You can inhale your head back up through center and toss those arms high through the middle. <laughs> Don Pedro is wondering what the heck is going on Good, a nice big inhale to grow long through your fingers and on the exhale, we'll take it over to the side. And apparently it's scientific fact that when we inhale, let's inhale and feel it through that side body and then exhale and let it go. We're actually inhaling atoms of everyone who has ever lived. So if in this time of isolation you need a little strength from your grandmother or your mother or Martin Luther King or anyone who's ever lived before, all it takes is one breath away, right? Inhale back up through center and then exhaling over to the other side. All of the creativity and courage you could ever need is just one breath away. Literally, right? On an atomic level. Okay, so we'll take our hands up through center. We'll drop them to those goalpost arms. On your inhale, look up. Just a tiny, tiny back bend, whatever is comfortable for you. On the exhale, forward fold. Maybe those fingers, those thumbs tap your forehead. Inhale, opening wide. Exhale, forward fold. One more time. Inhale to open wide. And exhale, forward fold and scratch the goat. <laughs> So that's a nice little simple practice, right? Doesn't take very long at all, and it might make you just feel a little bit more comfortable in your body, get a little bit more breath going on. 
And instead of feeling alone, maybe suddenly just through your breath, you feel connected to everybody else who's breathing all over this planet right now and dealing with similar stresses um, as we are. So I hope that helps a little bit.